How do you feel great on vacation? Like really good? Easy. You go to Aruba. You'll spend your time relaxing on cool white sand beaches and floating in healing blue water. You'll immerse yourself in natural wonder and find your center on an island where things move at your speed. You won't just feel great. You'll feel relaxed, renewed, and ready for life. That's the Aruba effect. Plan your trip at aruba.com. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at microsoft.com slash AI for all. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2478. How to Let Go by David Kane of raptitude.com. And I'm Dr. Neil. Welcome to another Sunday bonus episode. This is where I share an episode from another podcast in our network. And this one today is coming from my brother's podcast, Optimal Living Daily. You can find that podcast wherever you're hearing this. So with that, here's my brother, Justin, as we optimize your life. How to Let Go by David Kane of raptitude.com. The easiest advice to give and the hardest to use is let it go. Didn't get the job? Let it go. Still thinking about your awkward speech last week? Let it go. All the Paul McCartney tickets were bought up in seconds by scalper bots? Let it go. Life will go on after all. Just put it out of your mind. Of course, we'd let it go if we could, If we had the ability to simply drop worry or anger or a throbbing in the temples, we wouldn't need to be told. And being told to let go tends to make the feeling even more stubborn. Letting go is possible, but it's done differently than we usually think. We humans tend to overlook a very useful fact. Every experience does go at some point. Every sight, sound, taste, or feeling you've ever had is gone, except what's happening right now as you hear this. The pleasure of the last chocolate treat you ate, where is it now? The pain of the last time you singed your finger on the stovetop, where is it? Itchy mosquito bites, stress over past deadlines, uneasiness about where that wedding toast was going, gone. The fleeting nature of experience becomes a lot more obvious in meditation. When you dedicate some time to observing the arising and passing of your experiences, namely bodily feelings, emotions, and thoughts, you begin to notice that that arising and passing happens surprisingly quickly. A bubble of anxiety, if you observe it, might be truly unpleasant for maybe 15 seconds or so. A faint residue might linger a little longer, but it's quite bearable. And at some point, it becomes undetectable. However, and this is the vital part, if you had tried to get rid of that bubble of anxiety, you'd probably notice it getting worse. This is where all the confusion about letting go happens. All experiences do go, guaranteed, but you don't make them go, you let them go. When you let experiences go, they tend to go sooner. But we often don't let them, we fight with them. We tend to see present moment experiences as though they're more permanent than they really are, so we think it's necessary to fight with ones we don't like and cling to ones we do like. We don't recognize, for example, how few seconds the pleasure of an ice cream cone really lasts or how quickly a moment of embarrassment passes if we don't dwell on it. The result is that we count on pleasures too much and resist displeasure too strongly. We create stress by trying in vain to slow up or hurry along any experience we don't have direct control over, which is the vast majority of them. At a meeting, you say something dumb and feel embarrassed. If you could simply notice that feeling come and go without the normal contentiousness, It might last a minute or two. But we tend to do the opposite. We complain in our minds that we're an incurable klutz or maybe that other people are too judgmental. We vow to prevent it from happening again. Of course, we don't have enough control over life to protect ourselves from such normal human feelings. This demand for an impossible level of control over our experience is intrinsically stressful. Sometimes we can make an experience happen or stop happening if we have some direct means of control, 
stepping out of the rain if we're getting wet or turning on a lamp when it's too dark to see. But such clean and easy fixes, especially for our emotional experiences, aren't usually available. You can't open an umbrella to shield yourself from a bad mood, a physical pain, or a distracting thought. Letting things go is a skill we can learn, but it's easily confused with making things go, which is usually impossible. I like the way John Yates, a meditation teacher and neuroscientist, makes it part of a longer phrase. Let it come, let it be, let it go. This phrase reflects a realistic understanding of how life actually happens. All experiences arise and fade, and that can be observed in real time. There's no such thing as a permanent experience. Each one comes, is, and goes. We need to stop and observe our experience carefully to really see that happening. This is the basic aim of mindfulness meditation. If we develop sharp enough attention, we can see specifically what feelings and experiences we tend to cling to or push away. Then we can consciously, gently refrain from pushing or pulling and let the experience go. We can become free of the stress around a given experience, even while that experience is still happening. Whether or not you take up meditation, you can practice letting experiences come, be, and go in their own time. Daily life offers many opportunities. Start with the easy stuff, closing the shower faucet and noticing the warm water sensations seize, putting your fork down when you're finished eating, turning the reading lamp off for the evening. See if you can appreciate how beautiful or at least poignant all of this coming and going is. The going of one experience is often synonymous with the coming of another. And sometimes there's a bittersweet quality to be noticed in the transition. Reaching the final moments of a book or a sunset or a slice of cake. Closing the door after bidding your friends goodbye. You just listened to the post titled How to Let Go by David Kane of raptitude.com. We are driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it filters out incompatible applicants. So when you're hiring, the process is much faster and you only have to consider applicants that are already likely to be a great fit. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash health. Just go to indeed.com slash health right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash health. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Taste the Mediterranean through March 19th at Whole Foods Market. Save on Animal Welfare Certified bone and Beef Short Ribs, Sustainable Wild-Caught Sockeye Salmon, and more. Find sales on Parmigiano-Reggiano, Charcuterie and Ground Lamb. Grab an Olive Bull Bread from the Bakery. Plus, wines from the Mediterranean start at just $8.99. Taste the Mediterranean now at Whole Foods Market. Must be 21+. plus. Please drink responsibly. And thank you to David. I'm sure we all know some of what he talked about intuitively. The example my brother has given over on Optimal Health Daily is if I tell you not to think about a pink elephant, that whatever you do, you can think about anything, just don't think about a pink elephant. Well, chances are really good that the pink elephant will pop into your brain at some point. We think we have decent control over our thoughts, but in reality, it's harder than we think no pun intended. And this has been the case for me in many different aspects of my life. When there's a memory you don't want to think about, it seems like it comes up more often. Or if you're dealing with a mental health issue, maybe you start Googling it because you wanna find the best solution. But in doing that, you fixate even more on it, which then brings it top of mind and you think that you're experiencing it even more. And that condition feels like it's becoming worse. That's common. 
It's even common for people to experience actual symptoms of something they simply read about when it's extremely unlikely that they even have that particular disease or condition. Our brains are capable of so much, yet it can feel like so little is really in our control. And what David's talking about here is a very, very simple exercise for your brain that might be able to help. I say very, very simple, but it's definitely not easy. It can be extremely frustrating. I had a very consistent meditation practice for years where I'd do a minimum of 30 minutes a day. And I definitely experienced benefits, but it's also not a cure-all. What I do agree with though, is that it can make your attention very sharp, sharp enough to cut through the noise and cut deep enough to understand where our thoughts are coming from and where we really want to direct them. It's best if you try it out yourself if you're up for it. You can't expect quick results, but over time, I do think you'll see how it helps. So try it out, let me know how it goes. Thank you for being here and for listening through to the end. Have a great rest of your day and I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.